Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Midday Moment. Teaching Tuesday is today, and I'm happy and excited and just glad to be with you today. Glad you can join me. Glad you can be a part of what we're doing here at Calvary in these days. I'm Pastor Mark, one of the pastors here at Calvary Baptist Church, and it's good to be with you. I'm looking forward to teaching you today from God's Word. There's an old joke that's been around for years. In fact, I remember hearing it, I think, for the first time when my brother, my older brother told it to me, I think I was about eight years old. So I won't be surprised if most of you have heard this before, but I'm going to tell it anyways. There were two good friends. We'll call them Bill and Frank. Okay. One day Bill arrived to meet up with Frank and he had two chocolate bars with him. He had a big chocolate bar and a smaller chocolate bar. And so Bill offers them to Frank and says, would you like a chocolate bar? Frank says, hey, thanks, that's great, and takes the larger of the two chocolate bars for himself. Bill was indignant. He, like, how rude, he exclaims. I, I can't believe you took the bigger chocolate bar. Well, said Frank, which one would you have taken? And, well, Bill replies, the smaller one, of course. That would be the polite thing to do. Well, that's what you got, said Frank, so I'm not sure what you're complaining about. Now, the joke tells, it illustrates a point. Now, it might illustrate the point that Frank may or may not need a refresher course on good manners. But the other thing it it reminded me of as I thought about that joke is that Bill, on the other hand, the one offering the chocolate bars, bars needed maybe a lesson in contentment. In being content um, with what he had. Contentment is, according to the dictionary, the quality or state of feeling or showing satisfaction with one's possessions, status, or situation. Now, I'd like to think I'm a, a fairly content individual. Um, I'm, I'm well aware that God provides for my needs. He always has. We've never gone without. I love my job, my ministry as a pastor at the church. And, I, and there's always that nagging desire for maybe more time in my canoe out on the lake and maybe other recreational activities. But for the most part, I'm fairly content. However, as I was thinking about contentment, um, I, I come to realize that in these days, these COVID-19 social distancing days that we've been living in, I've been feeling a little more discontent than usual. You know, I'm struggling, I'm struggling to be content with not being able to hug my friends and family that I used to see all the time. I'm, I'm struggling to be content uh, with talking to people on the phone when I used to be able to go visit them in person. I'm struggling to, with being content with watching church on a screen in my living room on Sunday mornings instead of gathering together with the body of Christ. How about you? How is your contentment level these days? Are you feeling like maybe you ended up with a smaller chocolate bar? Wondering, what's the point of all this? Why am I trying to work from home? Why, why am I trying to help my kids do school from home? Are, are you tired of seeing your loved ones through the window at the nursing home? Or maybe watching them go off to the hospital for a procedure, knowing that you won't be able to visit them? Are you wishing things were, were better than they are right now? Maybe you're feeling like we're getting ripped off. We're missing out on experiences and graduations and proms and different events, parts of life that we've looked forward to and now we're missing out. Are you feeling discontent? And my, I guess my question as I thought about that is, is it okay to be discontent? Or or as Christians, are we somehow supposed to rise above those feelings, those feelings of discontent and, 
and somehow with faith and trust in God, believe that everything is okay, even when it doesn't feel like it. Well, when I think about contentment, and I think about what the Bible has to say about contentment, the first verse that pops into my mind is Philippians 4, verses 11 and 12. You've probably heard these verses before. The Apostle Paul is speaking, he says, I have learned to be content in whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Paul, of course, here is speaking about material circumstances, his material circumstances. He's, he's explaining that it's actually in context of having received a gift, and he's thanking the person for the gift, but at the same time saying, you know, with or without the gift, whether I'm rich or poor, or whether he was wanting or living with plenty, Paul had learned to be content in every situation. And the secret to that was God's strength, God's strength working through him. So Paul preaches contentment in every circumstance. But, but that same Paul, in fact, that same book of Philippians earlier on in chapter 1, verses 21 to 25, he says this. He says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain. I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. Now, Paul is saying here, he would rather be with Christ. That is his desire. But he's convinced that he's still needed on the earth, and this is where he's supposed to be. It's what John Piper uh, calls a dissatisfied contentment. He knows he's right where God wants him to be, and he's living fully dependent upon God with his eyes fixed on Jesus. But he's not truly 100% content because he would rather be with Jesus. Looking at some of, other, some of Paul's other writings, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18 says this, Therefore we do not lose heart, speaking of, now, now speaking of sickness and, and troubles that way, Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary and what is unseen is eternal. Physically, he says, physically our bodies are wasting away. Sickness, cancer, old age, whatever it is, it's going to get, it's going to catch up with all of us. We, we will not live forever in this world. But spiritually, the passage is pointing out that God is renewing us and growing us every day. It's also saying that the troubles, the challenges of this world are, are light and momentary in comparison with eternity with Christ. What we can see, this world, is temporary, and we are to fix our eyes on the hope of eternity with Jesus, the unseen, that which we cannot see and is eternal. See, this passage recognizes a discontent, a, a discontent with the troubles of this world, but it's tempered by the knowledge that it is temporary. And in reality, it is absolutely nothing compared to the eternity to come. What about Colossians 3? Similar topic. Colossians 3, verses 1 to 3. Paul again says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ 
in God. The believer, this passage is saying, should be focusing on, thinking of, on, dwelling on heaven and eternity with Jesus, not the temporary things of this earth. But does that not then imply a discontentment with the things of this world as we look forward to eternity? So are we supposed to be content or not? Well, I think the answer lies, the answer to that question lies in how we qualify contentment or discontentment. There is a, there is a godly discontent and there is an ungodly discontent. Let me give you some examples, and I apologize, I cannot possibly explore every possible scenario that life might throw at you, but I hope you get the picture from this. And I, and I hope I'm clear, because I want to get this right. But here's a simple example. For example, I, I, imagine my, my neighbor has a, a beautiful red Corvette, okay? And, and I spend an inordinate amount of time staring out my window at that beautiful car and wishing that was my car instead of the little Kia Forte that I drive. Well, I think we would all agree that is an ungodly discontent because, because it's rooted in envy and covetousness. I would need to confess the sin of envy and, and covetousness before God and ask God to help me to be content with what he has given me. Right? The same could be said about if I was discontent with my house or my, my salary or my cottage or, in my case, my lack of a cottage. These are areas, I believe, that would primarily be, there might be some exceptions, but would primarily be a, an ungodly discontent. On the other hand, on the other hand, imagine my marriage was in trouble. Now, it's not. Please don't start any rumors. Lori and I have a great marriage. We have a wonderful marriage. But imagine it was in trouble. Should I be content to have a lousy marriage? Or is it okay to be discontent and hope for healing and then do everything possible to be a godly husband and have a God-honoring marriage? I think we would all agree that that would be a godly discontent because it's rooted in the knowledge that God's design for marriage is more than what a bad marriage is, right? God wants marriage to be wonderful and God-honoring and, and it, actually a picture of Christ and his church. So that would be a godly discontent to not be content in that situation. The same could be said of being discontent that I have loved ones who are not walking with the Lord. I don't think anyone would say, oh, just... Just be content that some of your family and friends aren't saved. Of course not. Godly contentment is not some form of stoicism or fatalistic approach to life where we just accept everything and like we can do nothing about it. No, we pray and we seek God and we ask the Holy Spirit to save our loved ones by God's grace because, because we know that God's desire is that all should be saved. So that's a godly discontent. And of course, I think we would all agree it's okay to be discontent with sin. We should never be content to just remain in sin. That doesn't make sense. In fact, Paul addresses that very notion um, when he says, shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means, he says. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Romans 6, verses 1 and 2. And it's okay to be discontent with hatred and war, and racism, and all forms of sin. That is a godly discontent. You see, an, an ungodly or a sinful discontent is one that is centered on us and our needs, while a godly discontent is motivated by love for Christ Jesus and love of others. Another author put it this way. Uh, he said, we are to be content in our material circumstances, but discontent in the extent of our knowledge of God and our personal spiritual growth. You see, the root of an ungodly discontent is actually mistrust of God. 
not, not trusting his ability to meet our needs. And the fruit of that ungodly discontent will be frustration and, and further discontent. It's a downward spiral. Well, on the other hand, the root of godly discontent is faith and trust in God. And the fruit that a godly discontent produces is hope. You see, the difference between a godly discontent and an ungodly discontent is where our focus is. The ungodly discontent is focused on self. The, the woe is me attitude, poor me, look how bad I have it. But a godly discontent is focused on God. And the knowledge that there is hope in Jesus Christ. The, the reality is that believers, those that God has saved, were made for another world. So our discontent with things of this earth is natural. In fact, our current discontent serves to point us to the eternal end of our discontent when we leave this earth and spend eternity with Jesus. So what about those chocolate bars? Well, be content with whichever one you get, or even if you don't get one at all, trust God with your everyday needs and learn to be content. And what about our current situation with COVID-19 and all the accompanying restrictions? I, I wrote this and I, I prepared this talk before we heard that some of those restrictions might be lifting. And I'm and I'm excited about that. And as I as I'm getting texts and messages and people are posting on social media about it, I can I can sense the discontent we've been living in as people are getting excited about seeing maybe the end is coming. Is it okay for us to be discontent in our inability to meet together as a church, for example? Well, yes and no. It, it depends on our heart attitude. It depends on our heart. If we're missing meeting together as a church merely because we're concerned about all that we are missing out and how it's affecting me and it's not meeting my needs, that might not be a godly discontent. However, if our discontent is rooted in God's command to meet together regularly for the purpose of building each other up and loving each other, using our gifts for the benefit of others in the church, if we are rooted in the truth that God's church is designed to function in community, if our longing to be together is rooted in that, that is a godly discontent. We could go on and on and list other examples, but I trust you can take this principle this principle of a godly discontent versus a, a sinful, ungodly, covetous discontent. I want you to take that principle and apply it to your life. Apply it to the areas where you sense that discontentment in your heart. And ask yourself, where is your heart? Where is your heart? And what are you focused on? Are you focused on self and your needs? Or are you focused on God and on Jesus and on his plan for us and his plan for the world and the eternity that we will spend with him when this life is over. I want to encourage you today to live with a dissatisfied contentment, a godly discontentment, living in a broken world, but fully dependent upon God with our eyes firmly fixed on the hope we have in Christ Jesus. Let's pray together. Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for who you are, and I thank you for your word. I thank you that you teach us by the power of your Holy Spirit working in us through the word of God. And today, Lord, I pray that you would teach us what areas in our life we need to learn to be content about. I pray you would teach us about those areas where we have a, a, a sinful, ungodly discontent. But at the same time, Lord, I pray that you would help us to have a godly discontent for those things that grieve you, for those things that we know go against your will, um, for sin and for things that you find dis just terrible in your sight. And I pray that our godly discontent, Lord, would help us 
to push on towards the prize that you have for us. That we would push on in our, in our sanctification to grow and become more and more like you, Lord Jesus, as we keep our eyes fixed on you in spite of our circumstances, that we focus on you and all that you have for us. So I pray, Lord, you would help us with this. That you would help us to have a, a dissatisfied contentment with the things of this earth as we look to Jesus and we look to eternity one day with you. Thank you, Lord. We love you very much. And we are so thankful that you are our God. Grow us and help us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I trust you'll have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you can join us tomorrow for Worship Wednesday. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns about anything at all, please feel free to call the church office 905-433-2960. Someone is monitoring those phone calls. And if you leave a message, someone will get right back to you. We would love to chat with you. So blessings, everyone. We love you all very much. Have a great day.